Hey coach, welcome to our YouTube channel. We're super excited you found us. Um, that means you're probably a basketball coach or want some resources. Uh, so go down below, make sure you subscribe, get all the updates. That's the first thing. Second thing, make sure you go check out teachhoops.com. It'll be up below. Um, it is our resource. It is our community. It is what makes um, all of this go as, the, as, my, as my neighbor starts their lawn. Uh, more but anyway have a great day um, go check it out and leave comments down below if you if there's anything that you want to see on this YouTube channel you let us know and we'll help you out bye all right welcome to coach unplugged I'm gonna try to get my volume set here today holy cow early morning coach um, coach Randy all right so Randy I'm gonna have you introduce yourself kind of ex kind of tell the the audience your basketball journey kind of how we ended up at this point talking today um, in the Gosh, is it how many weeks is it? It's like five, six weeks to the to the clinic, I think, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're get, yeah, we're getting close. We're, we're getting, getting close. close. I'm gonna have to start working on my notes. Holy cow. I've been really, I've been <laughs> in summer mode. Um, but go ahead, tell everybody kind of your basketball journey and kind of how we ended up where we are right now. Sure, sure. Uh, uh this is year thirty for me. So uh yeah. Thirty one crazy for me. veteran. To, to say the least, and uh, started at a coaching everything when I first got in this 30 years ago. I coached middle school basketball, middle school football, high school baseball. I was really a, a, my education got paid for through the sport of baseball. I was a left handed pitcher in the OVC and uh, at UT Martin. And okay. uh, but basketball was always my love. Uh, yeah. I think that's an important thing for the, especially for the young coaches. Teaching's teaching, coaching's coaching. I coach like three yeah. sports when I start. I think you learn a little <laughs> bit. Eventually, you'll have to narrow it <laughs> because you're, 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 like, you're like you and I. We run out of gas. Um, you can only do so much. But I think at those young ages where you're just going, 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 coach as many things as you can i mean you'll learn something at every every in every step i think oh i think so and and you know the crazy thing is uh a food for thought even to this day i will go and sit at a great football coach's practice yes uh, i think you can learn uh from other people and strategies and the way they do it and not be totally focused on the x's and o's of of your particular uh sport so but yeah so uh, i started in crockett county i was there five years um, I got my first opportunity to coach at the high school level at Dyer County High School, which is in uh, Dyersburg, Tennessee. It's about an hour north of of Memphis. Okay. And uh, I was there for two seasons, and I got an opportunity to go to Dyersburg City School, which at that time, uh, and, and still is, uh, uh, it's a special school district. Um, there's there's a there's there's funding in the system and there's also great support so uh you know as, as much as i loved where i was at dyer county i had to make a, a family decision and right. uh let's get tough at times you know i had in fact i i was leaving a team that won 24 games were all sophomores uh, we had built that program <laughs> from nothing and in fact the year i left they were number one team in the state they went 36 and oh and got beat in the uh sub state oh. uh one, one step away from the dance so uh you know but uh, again it would have been selfish selfish thoughts for me to stay there uh right. you know we had our body of work had, had led them and they were going to be successful uh no matter who was coaching so right. you know at, at point you got to make family decisions along the way too so i've got a wonderful wife uh, i've been married for 26 years i got two kids three grandkids yes man i'm like aged out so, uh, but you know, it goes going. back to the it's it, the thing is, you know, I'm getting I'm getting near the end. I I don't know how many years I have left, but it's like the thing the thing about coaches is you're always going, oh man, there's that seventh grade group coming up, or there's you're always <laughs> you're always looking. It's like oh my god, it's like my wife looks at me and she just shakes her head. It's like oh you know, there's that group, there's that one group. It's like, but we're always I know. yeah. You just got to make so us you're so reluctant to leave because I mean, because part of the reason we do this is we love kids and we love coaching and you know, it's not, you know, we're not on TV making millions of dollars. It's not, there's no alternative motive here to be honest with you. Um, well, it, it is. And you know, to, and Steve, you can relate to this too. You know, you do it as long as we have, you know, I'm, I'm going into year 30 and I need to keep you young. 
You know, you, you keep that, that young, that fire. And, uh, you know, I stayed at Dyersburg 19 years. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was there, you know, and, and it was just like you were just alluding to. You know, you see, you knew what your sixth grade was, what your seventh grade was, yeah. what your eighth grade was. You knew that about every third year in the cycle, you're going to have a chance to make a big-time run you right. know, toward a toward a state tournament appearance and, and possibly a state title. So, you know, I was able to do those things there. You know, I was able to influence a lot of kids. Um, we had our SID, our sports information director, call me because we put up a new website at our new school, uh, Lakeway Christian Academy, just outside of Knoxville. And uh, they were like, man, I need your bio. And I'm like, so not into that. I know. And I, and I said, man, I don't care about talking about me and what I've done. Right. It, it, you know, that's really not it. I, but, but I will say this, there's one thing that, that is very important to me. And, uh, you know, the wins, the losses, the championships, the, all that stuff, man, all that stuff is great. And I, you know, one day I guess I'll sit around and remember it and, and laugh and talk. And, but you know, I've had 64 kids that have signed collegially and that is, that's a, such a blessing to me. Right. That's why we do this thing. Yeah, and it's so, like I, people always ask me too, and it's like I tell them, I said, I don't really even think about that. I, th- I said, someday I'll be on a boat fishing, and I'll be casting. I'll go, yeah. oh, I had a pretty good career. It was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, did, I did all right. But you're you're in the heat of the battle at this point. I think going back to one other thing you said, and it's the same with teaching. There's a life force with youngsters that that people that aren't around it don't understand. It's like it's almost like the movie Cocoon. If you remember the movie Cocoon. Um, right. where I get energy from them. When I walk into the gym or I walk into my classroom and I'm dragging, it's like, whoa. It's like, cause they're 16 to 18 year olds and they've got like, and I coach guys and guys are like, you know, the hormonal thing is just crazy. It's like, um, <laughs> but so, so where, so that's where you are right now. How long have you been at the place you've been at now? Well, uh, I, I actually, uh, this is my second year. I'll be entering my second season. This is actually just completed my first full year. I got okay. the job in May, so I really didn't even have a team. That The school is new. Okay. So we literally didn't even have a team uh, this past year for me to even go through a summer program with. Really? Um, we, uh, we got going in August and started individual workouts and, and doing th- that type of thing. And, um, you know, this was really our first summer together. So, you know, the thing kind of came full circle for them. I mean, we're literally teaching from ground up. Like, it's, it's total culture rebuild. Uh, I've been very fortunate in my career to do this. This will be the third time. Uh, we built a program uh, at Dyer County. And, uh, you know, I built a program at Dyersburg. But I knew, you know, those were established schools. Right. So it was more – Let's get in. Let's get the work going. Let's get the culture started. But never from scratch where there were no players. Like, you literally don't have a team. <laughs> so man, that's got to be kind of fun, crazy. though. That's got to be kind of fun because well, you're building room. It, it was crazy. Uh, my, you know, I can't tell you how many of my friends said, you have lost your mind, Randy. What are you doing, dude? I mean, we left uh, – I was at Riverdale for the three previous years. And, and during that time, it's the first job that I had taken – that it wasn't build the program. Right. The program was there. Riverdale had great success. They had four state titles before I got there in the last nine years. Right. But we had great talent. And so the, 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 the program itself, I mean, without using that word, I guess I use that word, kind of recruited itself to right. some degree. Because, kids I mean, it kids was a high level. Other winners. Yeah. 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 yeah you, it's a national, nationally ranked program. They've been nationally ranked for seven or eight years. And that job had come to me two different times, and I denied it because my kids were in school. Right. And it wasn't like I wasn't at Dyersburg. We were winning there and, right. and uh, had great success. But I didn't want to move my kids in high school. And uh, it was crazy. The thing came back around to me again, and I go and I interview for the job, and I'm like, you know, it, it was such now. My son was a senior and a three-sport guy. And, I told him, I said, look, you can stay with family here or you can go. And, and he came down and visited with us, and we left and went to Riverdale High School his senior year. And uh, I stayed there three years. We were, again, uber talented, a uh, whole different set of issues there in regards to getting kids on the same page, that kind of stuff. You know, uh, people said, man, you got to coach great talent. That had to be fun. Boy, it must have been easy to win those state titles there 
and, and we were. We won three in a row there. We won two national championships in a row. Right. But there's a lot to be said about nine Division One kids on a high school team. I mean, you got to get some buy-in. You got to get some share. You got to get some unselfish. Uh, right. You know, and then so there's a lot. You know, every every job kind of has its own nuances and its own thing. But I was very proud of, of how our kids bought into what we were selling and and then taking that and making it as successful as we could make it. Well, and I think that, I think you hit a I hit, think you hit a big point about that um it, every, every the grass isn't always greener and everybody has their um their uh their issues. I I I I tell people that it's it, when I had all my D when I when I had that stretch where we were just, you know, all the D one guys, it's hard to get everybody on the bus. I think it was Nick Saban who said his spring practice is to get the right guys on the bus and get them in the right seats and the wrong guys off the bus. I think that was Nick Saban who said that. But it's true. It's like uh, <laughs> you know, you gotta get them on the bus and then you gotta get them in the right yeah. seat. And the guys that shouldn't be on the bus, you gotta get off the bus. <laughs> and that's not an easy task at all by any stretch. Um, yeah, so much, so much truth in that. So Go much ahead. truth in that. But it yeah. was a great, a great experience. It was hard to leave that because we literally were returning six Division One kids. Right. And, uh, you know, this Lakeway Christian Academy thing came to me, uh, you know, and I, I didn't even – I had no desire to leave. Uh, right. I'll be honest. We're going to go state title number four. We're going to go right. four in a row. Right. And uh, – you know, it, you know, it was, it was almost, it, it was almost a godly thing. You know, it wasn't almost a guy. It was a godly thing. To me. Right. And, and I went down here to not burn a bridge because as I just told you, I just finished year 30. So right. uh, the private sector and being able to double dip with state retirement, that was always in the back of my mind as something I wanted to do later on because I'm not done with this. I'm ready to, you know, I'm ready to go. Right. And, uh, so we go down. We go down to, inter, to the job interview. I'm walking in. I'm expecting this thing to be a bunch of rich, money mongrels. We're going to buy Riverdale's coach away. And right. I sit down, and it was the most humble people in this boardroom, and they proceeded to tell me the most godly story of the origin of this school. And I li listen. I even took my wife with me. I'm like, man, I take my wife because there is no way that she's going to get talked into this. You know, this is not going to happen. Our grandbabies are back within 30 minutes of where we were living before. Right. I turned around an hour into the interview and my wife's crying. And I'm going, this is about to get serious. Yeah, it was, but, but it, it's, it's absolutely been a godsend. Uh, you know, the, the, the competitive side of you, hey, Let's see if you can do this from nothing. You know, you've right. done it from something twice. Right. And then you've got the coach kids at the highest level in your career. And here you are with a chance to move to uh, the Smoky Mountains and live in a beautiful area and, and, and have a chance to create your own culture. And that was such a, a lure to me to the point where I denied, denied, denied. And then, you know, it was crazy. We were sitting out on the back, on our back deck, grilling out one night. My wife said, what are you going to do about that Lakeway thing? And because we'd literally not been talking about it. We just like denied it. Right. And, and it, it was just still there. You know, it, it, it was a, it was God working on our heart, heart that, that we needed to be there to, to help this journey along for them, this Christian education in an area that does not have such available. Right. Uh, already so it's it's exciting times up here well it's also it's also it's also a growth for you i mean just think about i mean it, it changes change is inevitable i tell my boys it's like there's very few things taxes death and change things are going to change so you have one of two ways of dealing with it and change is good i mean it, i think it, it, it helps us grow um you know as a coach you're gonna have to do things you haven't done in 10 years probably or 20 years or new things it's gonna it's gonna be um interesting so coach how would you explain your coaching philosophy for anybody that's listening gosh you know it, it, i'll say this to any young coach that's out there take the pieces that you've got and nurture those pieces and then decide right. you know and and i, I I've, I've been very flexible in my coaching career you know some of my early influences uh, tommy patterson had an early coaching 
he was the best thing that could ever happen to me. God put him there for me right. because he was, he was really kind hearted. Uh, and he showed the girls that he loved them. Like they, they got it and they right. would literally through a wall for him. Right. <laughs> and, uh, he was, he was big on fundamentals, not big on X's and O's. That wasn't his thing. He was going to play basketball and he was going to do it with kids who would run through a wall for him. And, you know, they were going to do just fundamentally, they were going to be really sound. So he was a great, a great influence. And then, you know, my first high school job, I got to work with a guy named Butch Hopkins, who's, uh, who knows how many games Butch has won, seven, 800 probably. <laughs> right. uh, in fact, he's retired now. And, and Butch was big on player development. And I thought, you know, in year five of my coaching career, you know, Butch comes into my life and right. shows me the importance of, of being able to develop the pieces. Get the pieces right. This ain't always about you right. and what you know. Right. It's about what can you teach and what can you teach them. And, and I was really influenced by that, you know, at, at an early age. So, you know, when you say philosophies, Right now, you know, my thing is it, it, it comes from a, a guy named Rick Ensel. And, and Rick has been very influential in many, many college – or high school and college coaches. I mean, he's in nine Hall of Fames. Uh, head coach at MTSU Women right now. And, and Rick said this to me. He used to have – he's won, I don't know, 11, 12 state championships in the girls' high school game. And then he's won conference championship after conference championship in uh, CUSA with MTSU women. In fact, they should be one of the best teams in the country this year. I mean, they're going to be a top 20 program. Um, but, you know, his thing was this. You better be able to, at the end of the day, we can all come up with all this fancy stuff. We're going to press you this way. We're yeah. going to put this trick. Right. At the end of the day, you better get stops in the half court, and you better be able to score it in the half court. And that, that always stuck with me. Right. And whether that meant, you know, Steve, if that meant – I need to develop my players such that if you you might be able to stop my double screen action, but can you stop my kid in space? Right. If I well, I've always said I've space, always said high school basketball is about matchups. <laughs> it's about matchups. It's about you know how can you defend? Um, yeah, I mean it's it, it, it and it's a simple game. You got to score more than the other team. <laughs> which means you have to stop exactly. them and you got to put that little round thing in that little round cylinder that's it's pretty simple game when you think about it um kind of kind of diving in i i i agree with this and i and i talk about this in my in my, in my classes I, i'm a math teacher but i talk about life lessons a lot and i said and, and i said i've been successful because i found the right yodas through my life and the and the right yodas are the right mentors um you know, yeah. and then as you get older, you put mentors in different categories. Like my brother would be in my financial category. He, he thinks he's supposed to be in the basketball category, but he's really over in the financial category. Um, <laughs> and, you, know, you put people in different categories. As you get older, you get more pieces, more mentors, more, more Yodas that can kind of help you, I think. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm the coach I, think... I am because of people that have helped me along the way. I've taken a little piece of each of them, and they, that's hopefully I've, they've helped me along my journey. Um, but it oh, sounds like it happened that way for you absolutely. too. Yeah. 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 And you know, I think a lot of mistakes that I see with young coaches is they want to, a lot of the young guys want to, they want to stamp their name on I, I. Listen, <laughs> yeah. I'm not about that. I want people around me smarter than me. Right. Uh, I want some people around me that can teach me daily. Uh, I was very fortunate when I got the job here. Uh, I hired uh, as my number one assistant is a guy named um, uh, out of he, he's out of out of Granger County, and he had a huge success there. His name's Justin Combs, and he's won I don't know four or five hundred games. When I was in Double A in Dyersburg, you know we were always we had to get through him to get to state. He had to get through us to get to state. You know to win a state title. Just a great coach, and you know. He was kind of in the same boat as me with this Lakeway thing, and he's from the area up here. And I was very fortunate to hire him as an assistant. Uh, really good on the defensive side of the ball with presses and very good with high-low stuff and developing post kids. Right. Well, you know, I, the last my last nine years, I haven't had a post. <laughs> the last post I had signed at Ole Miss right. in 2011. Right. So – 
my last eight years, I had to readjust. And that's kind of where we came up with what we're doing now. Right. And, and that's, right. we are playing uber fast and you know, it, it, it's a great style. It's, it's really fun. But, um, you know, in, in regards to, in regard to the circle has got to be small and the people in that circle, man, got to be on the same page. And, you know, I'm very fortunate where I'm at right now that we, we have that. It's from like meet the parents. That circle of trust is very small. Yes. It's uh, um, and I think your mentors for the young coaches listening, I think your mentors don't find yes men or yes women find people that are going to like, I want my coaches questioning me. Um, you know, I want, I want to be pushed to the envelope because it makes me, otherwise I'm going to get in a rut. I want to, I want to think about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So let's dive into your style. Tell me about your style a little bit. What do you mean? Well, by you know, well as I said earlier, Steve, we well, I had bigs when I first started at Dyersburg. We always had big kids. I'd have multiple six footers. I was six four, six three. I was six five, six three, at one time. So we played. We played to that. Like we did right. crazy stuff. We we literally would guard everybody. No helpers. I was six five back there that would wipe it out. <laughs> so you know you kind of play to that a little. You bit. Clean up your mess. So the, the bigs clean up your mess. Exactly. Is what yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then one year uh, we funneled everything. Like this past year we funneled everything to our six four. I've got a big again. Right. But. Prior to that, prior to this past season, I had five sixes to five eights, right. a bunch of them. So, you know, we're like, we got we got to find a niche. What can our niche be? And, man, we just kind of sold out to we are going to play fast. You know, you, you know the, the, the Paul Westhead theory, let's shoot it in seven seconds. Right. Uh, the Grinnell says we're going to press you on a make or a miss. Yep. Um. I'm not necessarily that wild but, because I can't stand to watch a layup. So, but we do play fast with the ball, and we try to control tempo with the ball. And we're trying to literally shoot the ball in five seconds. And so we're very systematic in what we do. We're very uh, systematic in how we teach it. And, you know, we, we start with just core fundamentals. If we're, our goal is to play 75 possessions in a high school game. That's what we want. We want 75 of them bad boys. So a normal high school game is going to have around 50. Right. We're trying to speed the thing up. And, and so we're playing a numbers game, and then we're teaching concepts. Share and think, and, you, and, and there's two theories on that. Here's the math teacher in me. You probably feel, figure you're more – it's a law of large numbers. You think you're better probably than most teams you play. So more possessions probably add up to better for you. And you're used to mm -hmm. that, and you're used to that style. So let let's do a counter. So I'm playing you. Do you have a shot clock uh -huh. in your state? We don't. Boy, I wish we did. <laughs> we would love that <laughs> shot clock. <laughs> okay, so I'm playing you, and I'm even with you. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to come down. What are you going to do when I'm taking 30, 40 seconds off the clock? Yeah. So at that point, we've got to decide what best fits us. Is it half court run and jump? Okay. Is it half court trap? Is it three quarter court trap? We're going to do something to keep the game fast. Even if that means we might give you an easy look, but we might take it from you. Right. So I'm not sold out to Grinnell that we're just going to turn around. And if you make a, a full speed layup, you make a full speed layup. Right. Uh, but we still got the defensive, the defensive side of it as well. And we've had that happen in the past. You know, people say that all the time. Well, what, what do you do when, when uh, there's – well, here's the thing. This year, nobody was as – I wasn't as good as anybody. Right. I started two seventh graders, an eighth grader, a ninth grader, and a tenth grader. That's <laughs> what we started. We played a full varsity schedule. Right. So, my leading scorer was a 12-year-old. Just turned 13 in the season. <laughs> like, literally is pulling teeth out on game day. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You've got a tooth pulled – She's lost a tooth. Who does that? <laughs> now, the kid is uber down. She's uber talented. I mean, right. She's one of the top, the top seventh graders in the state of Tennessee. But, you know, who, what we did this year was different. So, we took this system of we're going to play fast. And, you know, as you said earlier, see, there's a flip side of that coin. Okay, well, here was the flip for us. We're so young 
if we shoot it fast, we won't turn it over. Right. And so there's and the that. Thing is, there's that easy, it's, <laughs> that's true. It's the, it's the law of large numbers. It's like, I remember watching some freshman girls. No, no, it was freshman. It was middle school girls game, like my third year coaching. And, and, the, and I was watching what they were doing. And then I went up to the coach who was a friend afterwards. He's going, what are you doing? He goes, well, I tell them to shoot it as fast as they can because they'll turn it over. Don't do that. I go, okay, that makes now, sense. Granted, I'm being a little bit facetious with that because, right. I mean, if you're going to play 75 possessions, there, there, has to be some, there has to be some quantitative thoughts by your kids. Number right. one for us, 10 to 2. 10 right. to 2. So if we're down 10, we're down 2. If we're up 10, we're up 2 because we're going to allow – we want the game to possessions. So right. – we have to keep those thoughts in mind. And then, you know, paramount to this is value the basketball. We have to value the ball. Do, right. We do not turn the ball over. And I'm so proud of that. At, at Riverdale, in our three years there, the most turnovers we averaged in any game, in any season, was 10.2. Now, that is playing at stupid speed. We were the number one scoring team in the state of Tennessee three years in a row. And we did that by valuing the ball. Now, we might take it from you. We're going to be aggressive defensively. We might, if we can take it from you 15 to 18 times and we're only giving it up 10 on an average, there were many times at the end of the season where our turnovers were going to be five or less for a game of 75 possessions. Now, in girls' game, that's, I mean, you're going to get 12, 13 extra times. Now, if I've taught you the correct shot, what's a Lakeway shot? What's a Riverdale shot? Right, and as long as we're taking those shots, we feel like we got an advantage. Yeah, I, I mean, you and I are you and I are the same. Per- you ask any one of my players, and what will what will get you pulled as fast as anything is not respecting the basketball. I mean, turnovers well, drive me bonkers. <laughs> I, I totally get it, Stephen. And but now, likewise, the first 45, 50 minutes of every practice are devoted to those things: right. ball handling, dribbling playing at a fast pace, um, turnovers. We're, just, we're not we're, – we're charting that. You know, right. we're charting that at practice. And I think, you know, that's really been the thing is, is how we do it. And, and, you know, again, I, I am no genius. I'm probably the least smart. I don't even know how in the world I got a master's degree. But my point is everything that we've done, we've borrowed from somebody. And right. we kind of morph it into this is who we are. Yep. And this is how we're going to do it. And our kids love it. They love it. Yeah. Uh, the first year at Riverdale, we, we, set, we set state records in three-pointers made. Um, three-pointers made in the game in the state tournament. Three-point percent. We shot 40% from three for the season. But we didn't start this system because we felt like we were superior. When I was at Dyersburg, I was 5'6 to 5'8". A bunch right. of them really athletic, so our thought was, let's let's shoot it, let's let's shoot thirty threes a game, let's shoot it fast, let's get long rebounds, and then let's give our kids some cheat codes to help them get to those rebounds. And so it was kind of a here's here's what we got. We got we got nine athletes that are all about the same, so let's get their shooting percentage to where it's right, and then let's play a numbers game. Now when we took that to Riverdale. That really changed because now there was seven, eight Division One kids out there doing it, and they loved it. So it, it was really fun style. It's an easy style to sell, too. It is easier style to sell, I think. Um, you probably have to play more kids. Yeah, you can. We, we did it this summer with seven because we had injury twice. Right. Nine and ten is the max number. Right. I think that's like the target number, and and I only say that because you know, again, you're gonna you're gonna think I'm crazy. And I say I don't run my kids. Our practices will get you in shape. Right. I don't want my legs dead at the end. So it's very, it, it's very fundamental that I'm playing ten kids through Christmas. Well, we're doing that to build depth. We're doing that to save legs. And yeah. then when we get to the turn, that thing is chopped back to about eight, and it's eight good ones. Right. And, and the thing is, I, 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 I tell young coaches, like, so if you get in early foul trouble, I'll pull you or early in the season. Cause I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find my bench too. You know, it's like early in the season, exactly. I'll play more kids. 
because once tournament time comes around, I'm going to have my seven, eight, and then, you know, foul trouble things happen. But, um, so how do you practice plan coach? To the minute. Okay. To the minute. Everything is to the minute and everything is fast. The first 45, 50 minutes of a practice are, are literally devoted to pass, catch, dribble, shoot, share, communicate. These things are going on nonstop, and it's one to the other. When I'm at practice, I don't use a whistle. I talk, and I talk fast. Oh. Everything we do is fast. I'm going to just explain that. You know, once we got the drills te- taught, you know, we, we're sold out to the ecosystem, some Don Meyer stuff. You know, you're going to start repeating. But I may just walk up to the point guard and, and say, look, we're going 32 and 2. And, boy, here we go, 32 and 2. Guy. And then you're going to hear it flying all over the gym. You're going to see kids flying around. If we don't transition well between each drill, then that's going to be noted. So when I say I don't run our kids, I don't preseason run. I preseason skill set. But once we get to the season, I mean, we've got standards. And so, yeah, we'll, we, don't, we don't call out running punishments. Look, man, we run 11s. And so, you know, if we feel like that we didn't make a standard, then we're going to run 11s to meet that standard, whatever that might be. If we were in a shooting drill and we fell four short, we got four 11s. And what so are those? What are those? We're on the line, 11 seconds on the clock, get to the other baseline and bite. Back. Whole okay. team better. So, you know, but we don't – we never look at it as punishment. It's always, hey, look, we, this is going to give us a chance to be faster. So maybe we make an extra – we get an extra possession because of these. And so everything is built toward the positive twist or the positive side of our system. So our kids are killing it. They're trying to make tens. They're trying to make nines. And we'll chop it down to that right? and just see who can do that. So everything is competitive, but at the same time, you know, we're teaching fast. We're playing fast. We're coaching fast. And I'm, that's not to say that we're not going to stop, explain angles, that right. kind of stuff that we're trying to, you know, that, that's going to be going to be fundamental to us. But, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fun style. It, it's a fun practice. I, I can tell you that none of our practices are ever two hours. Uh, you, normal, a normal practice would have between 105 and 115 minutes on it. And the girls always say you can go in and add another 15 minutes in, Coach, because you know you you're going to get into one of your tangents and you're going to start running your chops and we're going to be here for a few. And they're right. probably right. But another thing that we we think is fundamental to our program that's different than everybody else: we do not take kids out for mistakes. You do not get jerked if you do something wrong. We value the basketball. If my point guard throws it to her grandmother in the third row, she's not getting taken out. Now, she knows when she gets back on that bench, we're going to talk, we're going to discuss that. What in the world are you, why are you trying to get Aunt Susie involved? What are you right. doing? Right. But we don't take kids out because we're trying to play so fast. I do not need their emotions anywhere but in our system. And so that's been something that, that's really been different. I know a lot of the assistants that I've brought on in the past, that's one of the first things they say, how do you do that? How can you, you know, we don't be little kids. Right. We, we just don't. Well, no, that's fundamental to us. We're going to keep you in a positive frame of mind, and we're going to be intense doing it. And I think, you know, if I said, I, if I could give anything to a young coach, I would say this. Be intense, but be positive. I think it's a gift. It is. It's a it's gift. Hard. Yep. It's why I hired Justin Combs, because he has that niche. It's why I hired Whitney Nichols. Uh, Whitney was a great player. Her dad runs one of the biggest AAU programs in East Tennessee. It's called the Tennessee Trotters. She is so intense but positive. Right. Like I tell her all the time, I'm a better coach because you're on my bench, Whit. You're reminding me of what I know is fundamental for us to be able to play fast. So – you know, mistake recovery, all those things, those things become really important when you're trying to play fast. So, and, and, Steve, you said it earlier, man, just value the ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I love, Coach, that you you don't use a whistle either. I've, I've coached for 30 years, never used a whistle because I want them to hear my voice. Like, you know, I want them to hear each other's voices. I don't – if they play through a whistle, they play through a whistle. I mean, whatever. I mean, I've never seen that really happen in a, maybe in a couple big games. But – um, right. you know, I don't care about the, the whistles, the whistle, that's the ref blowing it. I want them to hear each other and to hear me. Um, so if you could only do three things at practice, what would you do? 
let's say I said you, you, you practice it and you can only do three things. What would those three things be? We would, we would do, we would spend 50 minutes on fundamentals every, every day. We do it every day anyway. I okay. cannot leave that. And people, people, you know, they were so crazy when I went to Riverdale. You, what are you talking about? You do fundamentals. You've got those kids that they're going to do. I said, yeah. And she's the sloppiest passer on the planet. Get the right. ball in a passing pocket and snap it. I right. want the ball to spin backwards. I mean, these right. kids were looking at me like I was crazy day one. What do they mean? I'm not the greatest thing since, since sliced bread. <laughs> what in the world? Right. No, your pass is awful. You don't value the ball. Right. So, you know, fundamentals would, would have to be there. Secondly, we would have to do, we would have to do all of our transition stuff because that's what we're sold out to right now this is our niche so all of our one on a two on a three on a four on a five on a to five on five we would have to have that would have to be a piece of my day and okay. we would have to have half court breakdowns and do you, half -court do you do structured do you do a numbered break or structured break or not <laughs> if i told you you'd start laughing here what are you talking about dude we we call we our break is all based around bigs and littles okay and bigs are forwards and littles are guards, and we yep. fill spots. Okay. And and so it's not numbered. It's not a numbered thing, but there's a lot of things that have to go into play for our kids to be able to play fast. Like the bigs have got to know, okay, who's running rim on a make? Who's running rim? Uh, who's taking the ball out? Because you got one second, and when you mess that up, when you come out, you're not going to be happy. Right. Because I'm the first thing I'm going to say is, man, I'm not going to be able to play you as much because you're tired. You can't get the ball out in one second. Are y'all not talking to each other? Who's rim runner? Who's got the ball out? Okay, on a long rebound to a guard, who's running rim and who's trailing? Because we like to turn the ball with our big in transition. So we've got one running the rim, and the other is, is going to be our turner. Because we feel like we can get a good turn, most bigs are going to run paint. So, you know, everything's kind of situated like that. Uh, in year one, we teach it all as point guard break. That way everybody can get to their spots and we can figure out how to get to spacing as fast as we can. Right. And this year for me, I mean, I've got, I've literally at times I'll have four guards and a six, four on the floor. Right. So, you know, now we've, we're getting to the point in year two with our transition game where, okay, where's Susie that's maybe not real fast. That ain't how we say it at practice, but that's how we'll say it right now. Right. So, Whoever's Susie's garden is our rim runner. Okay. You know, she, she's going to be the rim runner now. Uh, you know, on a made basket, then we're going to let 6'4 run the rim because we want her to have first look. And she's going to get first look on turn, on the turn too. So we're trying to ISO her early in transition. So a lot of it, you know, starts happening that way. And it just morphs. Like right now, I, got, I, I literally put three point guards on the floor at the same time. All three of them play point on their AAU team this, this summer. Okay. So the ball doesn't have to touch my what would be my one's hand. It could be in what you would number as a three, but three's really a one. We gone. So now we're filling, and we're throwing the ball forward to different types of players in space. Sometimes they're spot-up shooters. Sometimes they're playmakers. So it, it just it kind of morphs itself into being able to do that. But, it, but here's the thing, and, and Steve, you know, you forgot more than I know. But we are literally doing it every time. Every If that ball walks up the floor, you will die the next day. This is on. Our legs are nowhere near. We walked it up the floor in the third quarter with three minutes to go. Have y'all lost your mind? Right. So it, it becomes a relentless thing. You, you're getting it every time. And I think it, so I, people, can't like pre out, people can't two press you. No, nobody yeah. presses us. No. Nobody. Like last year, we started, I told you, two seventh, an eighth, a ninth, and a tenth. We had two teams that tried to press us. That turned into layup, 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 layup. Right. You're not going to press us. And, and it's just hard to. I mean, you're worried about two back, three back, or two right. back, half back. Right. Every possession. And that gave my young team the most problems last year because we were not physically strong enough in the half court right. to get. The, the best shot if that makes sense yeah oh well, that makes sense yeah yeah that's that, that's what i've always i've noticed with my with with my youngsters it's it's not a skill-based thing it's a it's a strength you know it's a, a 14 year old boy going against an 18 year old boy or man is the difference exactly 
Yeah, it's it's the, it's physically there's just so much change in those years. Um, what do you think the hardest thing to teach is? Jeez, man, you know, playing fast. The hardest thing to, to teach for us has been being able to press and be good at it. That's one reason I stopped the press side of that Grinnell because I value. I, I could not stand to watch a layup. Right. So. I think the hardest thing, you know, is to, to teach your kids they have to value the defensive possessions. They got to value – you got to be – got to have some dog in you. Gotta Thank you. dog in there. Yes. yes. We, we last two years we've had no dog. And it's like you, you, – and <laughs> if, if you can come up – if anybody's listening can figure out how to teach dog, that's great. I don't think you can necessarily, but you got to have a little dog in you if you're going to win. Like you got to have a little like, you know. I'm going to rip your hand off kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, I think that, you know, getting your kids to buy into that side of the ball too, we selectively press. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here like I don't press. But I've never in the state of Tennessee in my 30 years here, I've seen one time that a press mattered to a state championship. Right. It never doesn't. mattered. Never mattered. It's, in, it's on so, a bigger court too. You probably play in a college court too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we so played the big, championships at, at middle. Yeah, so that bigger court makes it harder to press. It does. It's like I learned that the hard way. Um, so, uh, can is there one coaching moment? Is there one like thing that we could dive into for our young coaches? Something a, a success, a failure? Is there one moment in your coaching career that we could dive into that might they might take a little bit from? Something that happened to you. Something that happened to your team. You know, there was – and it happened again this year. In fact, I talked to my team afterwards about it. Uh, there's those moments that, you, that you're, in the, you're in the heat of a battle, you're in a competitive game, and your kids are doing nothing right. Nothing. <laughs> there's nothing going on. And it's in those moments that it's hardest for me to be positive. Because yes. it's it, – here's why. You're going to get got on to in our program because it's something that it's a mistake we made. We've done it. We've drilled it multiple times. It, it's something that is paramount to our program, and you're still doing it. So then it becomes I can or I won't, and neither one of them are going to work. Right. So I, I had that moment come up before, and I blasted my kids just trying to pull some, some extra energy out. It was like day three of a three-day tournament. And we're just – there's just nothing in the tank. Right. And, and I, that happened. And I literally dug on them so hard trying to pull out a little bit more. And you know what? It, it failed. It did not right. work. Okay, we get to the NAC and National Championships. We're in the last game. We're in the last game, day four, game four. We are playing a team that I think we're superior to. We are doing nothing right. right. Nothing. We can't take the ball out. We can't throw it ahead. I'll look up. We'll have two shooters in the same corner. I mean, it's just fundamental stuff from October of day one. And here I go again at halftime. I'm lighting them up. I'm going to get, we're going to get a little bit more out only because I wanted them to get to win their last game. Right. Win your last game. You know, I've felt that. Not a lot of people have. Right. And I'm wanting them to play so bad that I did the same thing again. I went to this, I mean, not berating negative, just just fired up. I mean, let's go. You are better than that. You know, just right. all this stuff. And you know what? I got the exact same result yep. I got five years earlier when I told myself, when I get to this moment again, I don't know what I'll do, but it won't be that. Right. And I did it again. And yeah. I, I think sometimes, you, you just got to go, look, you know, if, if I had it to do over, I'd have called Tom out and said, look, girls, I'm tired. You're tired. We're better than this crew. Let's go win the next eight minutes and see what happens. Right. And see if we're there. What, I, yeah, I should have approached it yeah. different. And what I do is that point, too. It's like what I've learned over time, too. And don't get me wrong. I, I lit my guys up this summer once, and it, it didn't really work. It kind of worked. Guys are a little bit different. Um, but uh, I try to break it up. So, like, if there's – we play halves. But if there's a quarter left and we're down 10, 
we're not, you know, I, I say, okay, by the four minute mark, let's get this to four, you know, give, I give them little micro goals to go. It's like, we can do this. Yeah. I can get it all back. There's no 10 point play guys. You know, we're going to get this back. You know, let's take this little piece. And if they reach that goal, then their eyes get really big. It's like, I told you now, here we go. Now we're going to do this and this and this. Um, uh, so I think that's a big thing. So is there a drill or a, you know, a drill or something you do in practice that you'd like to share with the coaches? Is there like one favorite thing that you'd like? We do it. We do a lot of things that, that I think are fundamental and, and are really important to us and playing fast. And it, they almost need to be, you know, it's almost hard to talk through them if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. do, we do, we do have some, we call it pregame. Okay. <clears throat> and we, I, I got this from Duke. Duke's women, they called it 32 and 2 back when Gustin Force was there. Okay. And, and what they did, they put three lines at half court. And they're in three man weave. You get a layup counts one, and a jumper counts two. There's two balls on the baseline. And so the two that are not shooting the layup in the three man weave yep. are taking a jump shot. Yep. And, and you put two minutes up there, you try to get 32 points. Ooh, okay. I like that. Well, all that stuff. Do I, yeah, it's simple stuff, but you're teaching. Pass and catch. We're talking about look. You got to keep your teammate in rhythm. You know that that we make our kids say that all the time. We will stop practice and literally say it to each other and say it together. Offense is rhythm. We want that pass to hit our teammate in the pocket. Give her every reason. We're playing faster than them. Give them every reason to make it. So we're do we're doing it right there with that drill. Secondly, it has to be a sprint. Everything's a sprint. So when we started doing 32 and two, well, we got that pretty easy. So that drill has literally turned into 80 and two for us. So we're flying. Like right. now it's, you got to talk, you got to communicate. The passer on the baseline is trying to throw a perfect pass to a pocket. The guys that are in the three man weaver trying to make a perfect throw ahead to a kid in stride. Everybody's going full speed. So when we're in the game now, everybody's getting to see what everybody else's speed is. So we get that rhythmic thing going. I know Betsy doesn't go as hard as Susie. Right. So got to throw it a little farther ahead for Betsy, you know, like that. So, uh, but that thing has turned into 80 and two for us at Riverdale. We literally got 93. That was the record in two minutes. And our kids are jumping around like crazy. We'll start that drill in the fall at 50 and two. And we'll just say pregame 50 and two. We'll put two minutes lambs, up there. lamps one and a jumpers two. Layup one, jumper two. And let's go. No three. That's kind of our loose. That's a loose enough. We literally call it pregame. Like if I just look at the girls and go pregame, I mean the clock's going to two minutes, and whoever's keeping our clock starting to count, one, two, just like that, and we just total it up. If we don't make that, then we stop. We get on the baseline. We'll bring shooters out. I'll probably, I'll probably run a couple of elevens, and then we'll let them have a chance to shoot it off. Like I might say, John, get from line. John, you, you just got two shot foul. You make them both, we'll take one off. So now we're making pressure free throws in the middle. Anything that can be fast, fast, stop, I want to do at practice. If it can be something that's fast, fast, stop, fast, fast, stop. Because we're going to be playing fast. And so when we get fouled, we're going to have to stop, regroup, refocus, knock it down. So everything you do as far as your press, as far as your um, offense, you do in the full court? Other than, other than this, we call these quick hitters. So if we've gone three trips in a row, we've taken three Lakeway shots and didn't make them, then you're going to have one of my assistant's coaches talking about what we like is the top three thing that we do or the matchup we like. Like he might look up and say, hey, let's run fist of Maddie right here. Coach, you want, you want fist of Maddie? Coach, we've gone four straight possessions. You're going to run gold. You're going to have backdoor stuff right here. Let's go gold. Let's go gold. So we have quick hitters to try to piece in the, the difference. Okay. So, you know, there's – if I said what kind of team are we, we're a four-out-one-in team right now because I got 6-4. Right. So we're playing fast, and then we're just teaching concepts. Throw it ahead, throw it in. Ball reversal, set. You know, and, and in our, when we say set, we're talking about motion offense. We're in four-out, five-out right now. Okay. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is that, that like, when you do when – you, when everything you're doing is in the full court. Once you start, ninety ninety percent of the time, if we got sloppy, if we were getting sloppy with uh, with our down, let's say our downstream action, then 
we may go into a shoot, maybe we may go into a 15 minute shooting set at a practice that involves that down screen, setting okay. the down screen, cutting off the down screen, setting the down screen up, shooting the ball off the down screens. That might, that might be a piece, but you can see us progress three on a four on a five on a five on five on five. Five on five, I want the ball reversed. We're in the four out. Five on five, I want the ball reversed. Let's let's double away. Let's throw it all the way down the floor and double away. So we just have some simple rules okay. that that we give. But, you know, we want kids to play. I can't have you thinking about 10 screens, back screen, down screen, ball screen. I right. can't do that and play at 100 miles an hour. Right. And you're probably getting shots before you have to worry about most of that anyway, to be honest with you. You would you would hope that you know you taught your kids to take the right shots. You know that these are lakeway shots. Right. You know, we're going to shoot the throw three. We're going to shoot the trail three. We're good with something at the rim. You know if we got a, if we're in a ten point game, eight point game late, under three minutes to go, we may say okay no throw ahead three. We're going to take something at the rim only. We're going to reverse the ball and let our offense find it because they're probably going to have to come get us if we turned offense twice. Right. So we just we go into teaching concepts about clock and situation. But we are trying to play stupid fast. And, you know, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. We, we were 19 and 11 last year with seventh graders playing against high schoolers. <laughs> it, sound, it sounds so, right to me. All right, so let's do – Coach, <laughs> I'm going to do my rapid fire, which is I ask you a question, you're going to give me a quick response. Basically, sometimes they're quicker than others. Um, what's your favorite <laughs> – What's your favorite brand of basketball? I mean, the type of basketball that you use during the game. Our, our, ours is Wilson. That's what our state uses. We have, we have Nike balls as well, but I like the Wilson ball. Wilson Solution. or The Evolution is our game ball. Okay. Okay. That's, I like that one too. Um, what's one word to describe your ideal player? Relentless. Uh, one sporting event that you've been to. Best sporting event event you've been to? Best? Yeah. And <laughs> I go to, if there's a sporting event within two hours of here, I'm there. We go to the Titans. We go to – I sit on the front row at MTSU. Best sporting event for me is going to watch my former players play, like getting to go sit at MTSU or getting to sit at Vandy or Tennessee and watch one of those girls play. I love that. Um, what's your favorite pregame meal? Man, we're all about some chicken. Let's go. You ask my kids, Chick-fil-A and sweet tea. <laughs> chicken and waffles, baby. Chicken and waffles. Um, uh, one skill not being taught in today's game. Mid-range, without question. It, it's gone. The, the bank shot's gone, too, to be honest with you, in my opinion. No one teaches the it, bank. Here's what's crazy. In our four-out stuff, we're literally – ISOing and drilling and individuals the 12 footer because we feel like with our guards we can get there anytime we want and I, I went to 2001 we went straight to the state championship with three guards who could shoot a 12 footer and we were spaced the floor and got them to that spot because it was nobody was doing it it was it was almost obsolete in the early 2000s when we went there in, in 01 yeah um what's one thing you do to relax I'm a golfer golfer bow hunter <sighs> Oh my God. How do you do that? I used to golf. That frustrates me. You must be a good golfer then. You gotta be a good golfer. <laughs> <clears throat> On a day, I might be a good golfer. Yeah. Oh my God. See, like fishing, I don't care if I actually catch anything. It's just like I'm just outside. Um <laughs> what uh best basketball player you've seen in person. Man, that one's hard. That one's hard. You know, and I only say that because I've never got to see Michael in person. So, you know, I would have to say I would have to say LeBron in person. Yeah, LeBron's pretty good. Um, I don't think he's the best player in the world anymore. I think the best player in the world lives in Wisconsin now, to be honest with you. That's my opinion. Plays for the Bucks. I think he's the best player in the world. Um, I'm biased though. Uh best player of all time. It's, it's not even close. It's MJ, and it's okay. not close. So <laughs> anybody that says different is crazy. And I grew up a Dr. J fan. I oh. wanted to see the dunk. Oh, Dr. J, and I had I had the Dr. J, th I had the Moses Malone thing in my room, and I had the uh, Ice yes. Gervin, Ice Gervin with the uh, sitting on the blocks yes, of ice. Yes, George. 
Ice man, let's go. I love that. I love that poster. I got to find it. Yep. Um, one thing that helped you become a better coach. I think going through adversity. I think, uh, you know, I, I've had one losing season and uh, one time I didn't make a regional tournament. <clears throat> and I think that one year catapulted us, you know, moving forward. I started to take things for granted a little bit. And um, we had some, we had some things that in our locker room or our culture wasn't what it was supposed to have been. And right. I regret that to that day that I allowed that to get in the way of our success. Yep. Yep. I've had one, I've had one too. And I, I, you know, and I'm telling, I tell people my best coaching gig ever, we were 13 and nine. I'm telling you, we were 13 and nine. We were horrible. We had no <laughs> right being 13 and nine. Not the state tournaments, not the state championships. It's my 13 and nine season is my, like, that's my, like, up here. It's like, oh, how did I, how did we do that? Um, <laughs> but they bought in. They did. They bought in. Um, best game you've seen in person? I saw, um, I saw a guy named Tony Delk who played at Kentucky. Uh, right, in fact, I was dating my wife at the time. I said, listen, I'm going to take you on a date. We're going to go see Tony Delk play. I said, you don't know who he is, but one day he's going to be a great nba -er, And we're going to go see him. He's the best kid I saw live in high school growing up. Now, I've seen some others at events. You know, obviously, I coached in the Jordan Brown Classic game. They were all there. But uh, <clears throat> this high school game had Tony Delk against a guy named uh, Stanley Caldwell. Stanley played at Tennessee. I uh, went on and played overseas for a long time, but it was an incredible game. It was a four overtime game, and and it was just amazing. It was Tony Delk, Stanley Caldwell. They were just taking shots at each other, and uh, great great atmosphere. It was an FCA event, which is Fellowship of Christian Athletes event. It was held at a small college, and it was literally standing room only. And uh, that was that was a really a really cool game to watch. Okay, what's your favorite quote? I tell you, we, we try, you know, this year uh, it was pretty easy because we were so young. So, you know, we just talked about being competitive every game. So we always said, look, when we win, we earn. And when we lose, we learn. And we never, we oh, never I took anything. That. So that's really kind of what we hung this past season on. Say that again. I love that. I want people to hear this again. When you, when you win, you earn. And when you lose, you learn. Yeah, that's a great quote for a young team. That's a great quote for a young team. Um, one one word to describe your coaching style. Aggressive. 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 Oh, you're so the first one to ever use aggressive. Uh, we're, uh, we're not taking – everything we teach is that. Like everything we teach in our program is downhill. We stay on the attack mode all the time. If we're in the half court man, we're guarding the snot out of the ball. And we may be – we may be pack lining behind. We may be denying behind, but we're we're going to be aggressive on both sides of the ball. We want to control the tempo by our effort. I love that. Um, best basketball coach of all time. I mean, how do you? It, it's hard to get away from the Wizard of Westwood, isn't it? I read all of his books growing up. You know, I, I'd have to say John Wooden and his ability to be able to be more than the game yes yes he he also got players if you've read some books he, he oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> he got some players there's two types of coaches coaches with players and ex-coaches um so <laughs> just remember Jimmy's that. and joe's or x's and o's i you know, know what i'm taking <laughs> um one book you'd recommend or several books you'd recommend you know, I, I'm, I'm big, as I said earlier, I, I try to teach and coach to the positive. So, you know, anything that, that comes out as motivational, uh, John Gordon comes yeah. to mind immediately. Okay. Um, uh, went in the locker room first. That yep. was a good read. Uh, John Maxwell is, is another guy yep. that, uh, you know, that I've, I've read uh, several of his books. I like John Maxwell stuff because they're short and sweet. And when you're a coach, you're not real – well, I'm not real smart. So, it holds my attention long enough. 
Yeah, that's the problem uh, too. It's like, yeah, it's like uh, it's 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 the book um, stuff like great thing everything a basketball player needs to know by Dick Devenzio. It's very short. It's perfect for like basketball players because it's like two paragraphs and then it's done kind of thing. Um, yes. Yeah. W- one thing you change about the game. Shot clock. Yeah. No brainer. You need it. <laughs> I could have I could have answered that one for you. So I'm going to be devil's advocate on the shot clock. I agree that you like the the pace, but I think what makes high school the the high school game unique is there is no shot clock. Um, you know, I think it I I think variety is the spice of life, and if you, I think we're trying to become more and more like the NBA college game. Um, yeah. In it, you know. I agree. I agree with what anything that you say, proponent of it. I've got to I've got to agree with it a little bit, but right. there's also your where 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 are we going with it? Are we taking these kids to the college game? Right, so, and the thing is, you are and I am, but most people aren't. That's the issue. You know, the the five percent that actually play collegiate basketball. Um, right, kids, that's true. That's true. It's a good point. Yeah, most kids don't. Um, and you know, I don't know. I just think it makes it. I think it makes it unique. I love halves. You would love halves. We play halves in Wisconsin. You would love halves. Um, the flow of the game yeah, is just better. Right, right. Longer, a longer, a better opportunity for runs. The better opportunity for runs, and it does force your hand. You got to play more kids, so it's more like the collegiate game. You know, kids don't play forty minutes at the, at the Division One men's. They don't play forty minutes. They they ought to, they know they're coming out at some point. So kids know they're coming out for me in the first half at some point. I don't care how good you are. You can't play. Yeah, you're not. You can't play 18 minutes straight and not get a rest. So they know they're all coming out. So it's it's from a mental standpoint, it's actually a little easier for the kids. It's like I'm just pulling you because it's like you got to get a rest. <laughs> um, you can't go for 36 straight minutes. It's not going to happen. Um, all right. Any parting words of wisdom, Coach? I'm I'm excited to meet you in a couple. Geez, like five six weeks. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'll be honest, man. I feel like. I feel I feel blessed to to even get considered to come and talk, but it is something I'm passionate about. And the the thing that the thing that you're going to see with us is going to be simplicity. Like we're we're so simple, and but yet we emphasize so much. And I think that's the thing that makes us a little bit different. There's lots of people that do this. Like there's lots of people that would that would say this, Kevin. Or oh, you go watch Riverdale. All he do is fast break. Okay. Right. Okay, come to our practice. Right. Come to our practice. You know, that's what I would encourage you to do. And maybe there's a little bit more to it. Maybe what are you going to talk practice. about at the clinic? What are you talking about at the clinic? We're we're going to talk about system. We're going to okay. talk about our transition our transition game. I'm going to basically take a group of – I think he's got a men's team coming. Yeah. A men's prep high school. Yeah. And we're going to go through, you know, three or four of my favorite fundamental drills that we teach off of. And then we're going to go through our progression to our transition game. And how all the pieces fit together. Oh, I love that. Uh, we don't teach. We don't teach. Here's something else that's great. We don't teach four different press breaks. I don't need four press breaks. Right. We need one. We're good at it. Right. So, you know, it, it's that kind of stuff. You know, that that's what I get excited about is getting to share that, and maybe you know a young coach can pick up and go, "Hey, man, that'll work." Because that's what I was doing. Right. Thirty years ago, I was doing the same thing. See. Yeah, and the and the fun thing is that and that's what I'm telling the, the that's what I'm telling coaches that are thinking of coming that are down around land to come. It's it's gonna be great. I'm telling you, I'm trying to get Kevin to get us like we should have a QA at the end. Just like get us in get us in a room with a whiteboard with all this with all this brain power and let some of these young coaches just throw stuff at us. I we'll all have different answers for it. It will be great. Yeah. I would love that as a as a young coach. Um yeah, so I'm gonna talk about like kind of how I map out my season I mean like I it sounds more like we're very similar but I I mean I I basically have the whole year kind of mapped out progression wise it's interesting uh-huh. um, so I'm going to share some of that and some of kind of like how you know my program and some of the stuff I've done in my program and and drills and stuff too but it, it will be good it will be really good I was there last year it was awesome I'm st- I mean I'm st- still listening to some of the stuff it's really good um well, I'm fired up. In fact, we're using it as our coaching retreat. So, we're I'm bringing my staff. Oh, you're bringing and your staff. See, I'm bringing my wife. So, that's <laughs> – <laughs> Do you play golf? I don't. I don't. I'm not golfing. 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not golfing. I'm actually going down. I'm going down. She said. She says you can go back, but we're staying at the Four Seasons or wherever we're staying outside. Yeah. She goes. I. So we're going down a day early. We're gonna have like you know a, a day to ourselves before the clinic on Saturday. So we're gonna go down on Thursday night. Um, it'll be good. It's yeah. She she loves it because like she yeah. <laughs> It's 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 away from the dogs and the kids. Away. Yeah, it's a it's a it's why we've been married twenty plus years. She knows, you know. Um, exactly. So, all right. Well, thanks, Coach. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, so much, and I so much appreciate of you giving me a shout. Look forward to meeting you, man. You know, I'm going to dig on your brain. <laughs> it's good. I hope we do. I hope uh, you know. You know, if Kevin's in the new gym, I wonder if he's in the new gym. I knew they were building a new gym. Whatever. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, the last I talked with Kevin, that was kind of what was discussed, is that that was in the makings. They were excited because we were kind of in that same process. We're not in our gym yet. We have a $70 million school. It's not built. Like, we're waiting, hoping by fall break we're in it. Where do you practice and stuff? Well, we have what they did. They, they came in and bought a existing K through – K through five school, they spent fourteen million on it three years ago in upgrades and renovations. So we're in a brand new building that will end up being our pre K five feeder. Okay. Okay. So we're okay. we're having to share one gym, which is not real fun, you know, with <laughs> volleyball and everybody else trying to be in there. But right. you know, here's what it is, man. What what they're building us is absolute palace. It'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. All right. Thanks, coach. Okay, brother. Y'all have a great day. Hey, Coach, hope you liked that video. If you're looking for more videos just like that, check out teachhoops.com up above or down below in the show notes. I do not think you'll be disappointed. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, you name it, it's there for you. Learn from me. Let me help you become a better coach.